Welcome to today's webinar on cycles of equine thrush. Uh, we're hosted today by Life Data Labs, Inc. Uh, my name is Corbin Delaney. I'm the marketing manager here at Life Data. And I'm here with uh, Mike Barker. And uh, Mike is going to be uh, giving our presentation today. Uh, but just a few things to uh, talk through before we uh, begin the presentation. Um, first off, uh, it's usually on the right hand side of your screen, you'll see a go to webinar menu. Uh, you can use this menu to ask questions as we go through the presentation. Uh, we encourage you to ask questions uh, at, towards the end. Uh, Mike will answer those questions. So if at first we don't immediately answer them, uh, don't worry, we will get to those questions at the very end of the presentation. Uh, we do that just to help, uh, help our uh, presentation through to where we don't stop and we make sure we get through um, all the information in the time frame. Uh, you know, we hope to get this uh, all the way through within 45 minutes. Um, the secondly, we do have a giveaway uh, during this webinar. Uh, to qualify for that webinar, you have to have a U.S. shipping address, um, and then also you have to be present uh, while we do the giveaway. Um, so make sure you stay on for that. Uh, feel free to invite any friends uh, while you're listening to it, and um, and I'll hand it over to Mike. Uh, thank you very much, Corbin. And thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, I am Mike Barker, uh, and as I talk, as I mentioned to Corbin just a little bit earlier, uh, come November one of this year, I will have been associated with Life Data Labs for 19 years now. And over that 19 years, I have attended many horse expos, horse events, and have actually talked to hundreds and hundreds of horse owners across the U.S. and actually around the world as well. And one of the things that comes up more often than anything else as far as problems that they're having, and that is thrush. And of course, as you can see in the background here, uh, I've been associated with horses many, many years myself. I understand what wet, dry conditions are. I understand what uh, picking up the foot, cleaning that foot up on a daily basis will do uh, to help alleviate the thrush problem. Not to say that I do that on a daily basis by any means. I'm guilty of not doing that. I understand what a dirty stall is and what that will do for a problem with thrush as well. And so let's, uh, let's get into our subject here. Uh, and, and the first thing that we need to understand is exactly what is thrush. If we can get it to move forward here. Uh, of course, I think most of you understand that thrush, number one, is a bacterial infection. And uh, it's a type of bacteria that is uh, going to thrive, that's going to be very aggressive in low oxygen and no oxygen situations. And of course, we will get into that uh, a little bit deeper in detail as we get into the webinar. We understand the color of thrush, and as we take a look at this particular hoof here, we see the black on either side of the frog here, and we actually, in the central sulcus of the frog itself, we see this blackened area, and this is not a normal uh, sulcus as we see in the central part here. Uh, this is actually being uh, eaten up uh, by the bacteria itself. And of course, uh, this uh, particular horse has been shod. We can actually see the old nail holes. Uh, and the black here is some bacteria that's taking a hold uh, in the white line area itself. Uh, we also understand that when we pick up the foot and we clean out either side of the frog in the central part of the frog, that there's often a very unpleasant smell, a rotten smell such as that uh, of a rotten egg. And you might ask, well, what causes that particular smell? And if we think about the makeup of the hoof itself, it's basically made up of uh, protein. Uh, and, and this protein tissue uh, is actually high in sulfur. And as the bacteria consumes this particular tissue, 
then as a waste byproduct, it's giving off this volatile sulfur, and hence we end up with this, this smell, this foul odor. Uh, and if we allow this problem to get completely out of hand, and this bacteria actually gets down into the sensitive uh, tissue uh, underneath the frog, then we can end up with a lame horse altogether. And of course, the part of the foot that's mostly affected is the frog, uh, this triangular area here. And, when, and as we take a look at the frog itself, of course, uh, the, this is the apex of the frog. Uh, the widest part of the frog here is called the base. And, and this is the central sulcus of the frog. And this is a pretty typical uh, an ideal situation as far as the central sulcus itself. Uh, and, and so the frog plays an important part as far as hoof quality itself. And we might even say the frog is an indication of what's going on internally uh, inside the horse as well. If we have a good, sound, healthy frog, uh, then we're less likely to have a problem with thrush itself. Now, the, the frog does several things. Number one, it helps to share the load that's carried by the hoof wall itself. Uh, it actually acts as a pump uh, to help return blood back up toward the heart of the horse as well. Uh, so it functions in many, many different ways there. And, and one of the things that we have to do to keep this frog healthy uh, there's, there's many aspects and many things that we'll need to do, and we'll cover those as we get further into the webinar as well. And in extreme cases where the problem has gotten totally out of hand, the bacteria can actually consume almost the entire frog itself. And of course, as we, this is the apex here, and from about this point back toward the hill, uh, it's actually been undermined by bacteria. And if we noticed here on this particular side of this uh, frog, we have a pretty deep hole here. Uh, and, and I would almost bet that this horse is gonna be lame simply because of thrush. Uh, we let it go too long and it's actually undermined this particular frog. Now our problem is this continuous cycle that we have. And I hear this over and over from horse, own, horse owners that I've spoke with in the past. And, and basically we have a thrush problem, we do a treatment, and then it's not long until we, we have the problem again. So it's just basically a continuous cycle that we're fighting here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at different things that we can do to help break up this particular cycle. Uh, the next thing that we need to take a look at is what causes the problem. Of course, I think most of you understand that wet conditions are very detrimental to the foot. Uh, if you live in the southeast, we have high, high, high humidity that we've got to deal with as well. If that horse is being stabled or stalled most of its life or part of the day, and if we don't do a good job in cleaning stalls, then that is a contributing factor uh, to this problem. Of course, as we mentioned early in the presentation, this particular bacteria thrives in the absence of oxygen. So that means that we need to do a good job in cleaning the foot. We also need to take a look at what we're applying to the foot itself to make sure that we're not applying something that's going to block the needed oxygen. Uh, of course, we can talk about hoof maintenance uh, as far as picking up uh, the foot, cleaning the foot. Uh, uh, the farrier has a play in this as well. We need to be on the regular cycle. Uh, we need to pr uh, trim properly uh, so that we do have a balanced foot. Exercise uh, is highly important as far as the horse self-cleaning the foot. Uh, and also keeping the frog healthy. 
and, and the shape of the foot itself is also a factor. And you may not have given this much consideration, but if we have a horse that has contracted heels, uh, a lot of times that horse is able or unable to self-clean because it wants to tramp and it wants to hold that debris. And a lot of times that frog is going to be squeezed by that contraction. That frog is going to be become elongated. And then that central sulcus is affected because it's being squeezed as well. And it's, it's a good area to hold that debris. It makes it very difficult to, to, come, to uh, clean out as well. So the shape of that hoof is a, is a factor that we uh, need to take a look at as well. Now, what can we do to help prevent the situation? I would suggest three keys to end this particular cycle. And we've mentioned these, the first one here already, and that's maintenance. Uh, and as we said earlier, we need to take a look at what we're using to treat the thrush, to make sure that the topical that we're applying to the foot is not contributing to this continuous cycle. In other words, we don't want to apply anything to the foot to treat thrush that's very caustic, that's going to burn, or that's going to kill hoof tissue itself. Uh, we need to take a look at hoof care. Uh, as far as nutrition, nutrition is highly important to hoof quality, to the health of the frog itself. And we'll go into this a little bit deeper. And, and then the environment is uh, another big factor into preventing this cycle as far as bacteria in those wet and dry conditions. Uh, this is not a weekly, this is not a monthly deal. This is a daily objective uh, that the horse owner must manage. And if we will do that on a daily basis, then we're less likely to have a problem of thrush and hopefully we're going to break up this thrush cycle. Of course, the horse owner uh, is going to see that horse on a daily basis. And, and of course, one of the things that we want to do is, is we want to remove all that unwanted debris that's being trapped on either side of the frog in the central part of the frog. Uh, particularly if the horse is being stalled, the horse is subject to uh, fecal matter, ammonia, and we know that all of that is very detrimental to the bottom of the foot as well. Uh, and by cleaning uh, these particular areas, we're allowing oxygen to get where it needs to be, thus helping to cut down on this bacteria that we don't want to take a hold and start growing uh, in the foot as well. Uh, and of course, by picking the foot on a daily basis, we're going to improve the overall integrity and quality of the foot. And, and don't be afraid to pick up the foot itself. And, and another point that we will make at this point, you know, thrush uh, more often is actually in the hind foot of the horse versus the front. And you might ask, well, what's the difference there? Uh, I'd suggest two things too. Number one, the horse is carrying more weight on the front end. Uh, there's more concussion there. And a lot of times the horse is able to self-clean. And the other reason that I would give is, is that it's just much easier to pick up the front foot of the horse versus the hind foot. And a little, some folks may be a little apprehensive about picking up the hind foot of the horse itself. And of course, this is a, a classic example of a hoof that needs to be cleaned out. Is oxygen being able to get where it needs to around the frog itself? And the answer to that is no. So this definitely, this foot is definitely suffering from a lack of oxygen, number one. Uh, you can just imagine the type of bacteria that we're going to uh, find in this of what's been packed inside the shoe into the uh, the grooves on either side of the frog and also the central part of the frog as well. 
and, and as we continue to talk about the, the role of the horse owner, uh, a professional that's going to be involved is, is the farrier. Uh, of course, the farrier is going to see that horse on a regular basis, uh, hopefully every six, seven, eight weeks. Uh, that farrier between each time he makes a visit, he or she will be able to determine whether or not there's been any major changes in hoof quality, even in that short period of time. Uh, of course, that foot needs to be trimmed properly. Uh, and especially back toward the heels itself, we need to make sure that that's uh, cleaned out so that doesn't aid in the trapment of debris. Uh, so anyway, we need to stay on a regular schedule uh, in, in keeping uh, in, in maintaining hoof quality. One thing that the horse owner can do, or another thing that the horse owner can do as well, is provide exercise for the horse. Uh, exercise is going to self-clean the hoof, and I'm sure that you have seen this before, even at a walk or a trot, you will see this debris that will be thrown up into the air from the bottom of the foot itself. Uh, this exercise is also going to increase the metabolism of the horse, and in doing that, we are increasing blood flow, and blood flow is highly important in getting the needed nutrients to the different to the tissue, to the cells in the foot to keep that the, the sole, the internal part of the foot, and especially the frog healthy as well. And when we exercise, it's also going to aid in hoof growth, frog development as well. We need to provide a balanced diet to the horse. And of course, dermal tissue is the largest glandular organ in the horse itself. And it needs massive amounts of nutrients on a daily basis to maintain and to replenish the dermal tissue that's being lost on a daily basis. And when we talk about dermal tissue, we are talking about the foot of the horse, we're talking about the skin of the horse. We're talking about hair, hair coat, mane, tail. And we're actually talking about one aspect of the joint as well, and that's the dermal side of the joint, cartilage, tendon, and ligament. All this is dermal tissue, requires excessive amounts of nutrients, but the key is that those nutrients have to be provided in a balanced manner where they're provided in the right proportion and ratio to each other for the horse to get the most out of what we're feeding. Proper nutrition is essential. It's critical to developing, to growing, to regenerating, to maintaining a healthy hoof. So we might ask ourselves, what is a balanced diet? Well, there's some key components to providing a balanced diet of the horse. And as you can see here, we're talking about calories or energy. We're talking about protein, vitamins, minerals, and amino acids. And all of these have to be provided in the right proportion and amount to the horse. This is a classic example of an energy imbalance here. Simply too many calories in the diet of this particular horse. And we end up with this very obese, overweight horse, uh, which would have a body condition score of somewhere close to a nine. And of course, uh, a horse that's this obese is very subject to all type of metabolic problems. Uh, it's also, this excess weight is also going to work on the hoof capsule itself. It's going to work on the joints of the cell. So in providing the balanced diet, we've got to uh, maintain or we've got to provide the needed calories to maintain the body condition that we are needing or wanting, but we don't want to exceed that. As far as the other nutrients, it's, it's the same principle as well. 
they have to be fed in the right proportion and ratio to each other. Something that we can do to help improve hoof quality, to help improve the internal aspect of the hoof capsule, to help improve the frog, uh, the quality of the frog. And if we have a good, healthy hoof capsule and a good, healthy frog, then we're less likely to have a problem with thrush itself. Uh, of course, a good supplement is going to promote hoof growth. Uh, it's going to uh, grow a denser, uh, a more compact foot. Uh, it's going to grow a foot that's going to have a thicker hoof wall, a thicker sole, and of course, the, uh, a good healthy frog as well. And when we do that, and when we have this good healthy foot, then it's going to become more resilient to an invasion of bacteria. Another culprit that takes a toll on the foot of the horse is our environmental conditions. And this is going to aid in this continuous cycle of thrush. And one of those is our stall maintenance and keeping those stalls clean, keeping those uh, uh, feet dry. Uh, of course, a lot of times a horse may be out 24 seven. Uh, if we had a run-in shed or something that the horse can get into, if we have higher ground somewhere where we can uh, maintain that horse during these wet, muddy conditions, uh, it will help tremendously. Uh, something else that we can use uh, to help combat the wet, dry, plus the bacterial infections would be a topical that we can add to that foot, uh, depending on uh, how extreme it is, anywhere from one to two times a week for maintenance or three to four to five times a week if we have some extreme conditions. Uh, of course, there's other products that we can pack into hoof defects, such as old nail holes, cracked chips, uh, separations in the white line area as well. Uh, and there's a couple of products that we have mentioned here as suggestions, and we'll spend a little bit more time toward the end of the webinar on each of these particular products. This is a, a, a very nasty situation here. We have extremely wet conditions. Uh, we have a paddock that uh, is uh, nasty from fecal matter, urine, and if this horse is having to stand in this most of the day, then this is going to be very detrimental to the bottom of the foot and, and the entire foot itself. Now, what can we do to treat the problem? Well, let me suggest that we need to start with prevention. And if we can prevent the problem to begin with, then that's an easier situation than having to deal with a full-blown problem of thrush where that thrush has gotten into sensitive tissue and the horse is lying. So in treating thrush, Number one, we've already mentioned this. We want to avoid, uh, avoid those wet paddocks if possible. We want to keep those hoofs clean uh, and dry. Uh, there's certain products that we can use if we have a thrush problem. Uh, and one of them is actually pictured here, and that's our Life Data Labs hoof clay. Uh, and I will go into more detail with this product here in just a few minutes. Uh, we want to avoid any type of a topical or a thrush remedy that's actually going to kill, burn hoof tissue. Let's stay away from that. Let's not add anything or apply anything to the foot that's not going to allow the foot to breathe. Uh, we can add supplementation to our feeding program as well, especially a hoof supplement and we'll get into one of our products here in a few minutes as well. And if we do run into a problem where the horse is lame, 
or we have some uncertainties about what's going on, by all means consult your veterinarian and farrier to get their advice and opinion on what direction you do need to go. And this is our uh, hoof clay. Uh, it's an antimicrobial packing. Uh, and, and right now, this particular farrier is actually uh, applying this to some uh, chips or cracks in the hoof wall itself. Uh, it can actually be used to fill in some old nail holes. And this is our particular problem right here if we are not mindful of what we're using to treat thrush. And if we use, and if we actually have a thrush problem, and we use a caustic chemical that actually kills the tissue, we may eliminate the thrush for a short period of time, but we have set ourselves up for this problem right here, this dead tissue that was created from this caustic product becomes a food source uh, for new bacteria to come back in, to feed in, and then we end back up with our thrush cycle itself. So be very mindful of what you're using. Uh, and if we have a situation where we actually have a horse that's lame, and if we have a horse that's lame, then that's telling you that the thrush has gotten into sensitive tissue. When we apply one of these caustic products, and that's going to actually burn tremendously the foot of that horse. And at some point, if we continue to use that product, that horse is will become wise to the situation. And that horse at some point is going to refuse treatment with that caustic product that does the burning itself. Certainly don't add anything that's going to block the oxygen that we've mentioned. Uh, and, and some home remedies that I've heard many, many times before, uh, of course, uh, a lot of folks will depend upon copper sulfate for a thrush problem. Uh, be very mindful that it is very caustic, number one, and also understand that it's very harmful to the individual that's making the application if it's not handled correctly. Some of the other home remedies that I've often heard of uh, and has been mentioned to me in the past, uh, turpentine, formaldehyde. Uh, a lot of folks, folks will like to use bleach. Uh, even diluted bleach if, will actually kill and burn hoof tissue itself. Uh, the last product here, tar, what it's going to do if we actually apply that is it's going to completely seal the needed oxygen away from the foot itself. In other words, if you can't put it on your own self, then don't put it on the horse. Some recommended products to treat thrush that's uh, actually made uh, here at Life Data Labs uh, is our hoof clay. Uh, it is a product that is has a putty-like consistency. It's a tacky product, it's a sticky product, and it sticks well to the surface of the hoof wall or the sole of the foot. It's a very mild product as far as ingredients. It has some tea tree oil and some tamed iodine in it as well. It also has a little yucca for a specific purpose, and that yucca will bind up, tie up the ammonia that's in the urine to keep it away from the bottom of the foot. Uh, the hoof clay is intended to be used for specific problems, either in the hoof wall itself or the sole of the foot. Now, if we have chips or cracks in the hoof wall, then this can be packed into those areas there. If we have old nail holes after the uh, shoe has been reset, we can fill the old nail holes with the clay, and that's going to do a couple of things. It's going to keep out any unwanted debris, plus it's going to fight off any bacteria that would be present in that old nail hole as well. 
Uh, this product can be used by the farrier right before he resets the shoe. In fact, if the farrier will use this in the, the white line area itself and then apply the shoe on top of that, that's going to help keep this white line area clean. And when he actually drives the nail into the hoof wall, the nail will actually go through the clay itself and actually help protect that uh, new nail hole that's being created there. Uh, it will not block oxygen. It's extremely safe from that standpoint as well. And if we actually have a thrush problem, then we can actually take a little bit of the clay and we can apply it to either side of the grooves here. And a lot of times we think when we say packing that we actually have to pack full these grooves and that's not the case. In other words, if all we're trying to do is we're trying to get a coating of clay in this affected area here. Uh, and if we have contracted heels, uh, it's gonna be very difficult to actually pack that into those areas there. Uh, uh, the, the product uh, is very porous. Uh, meaning that it, it will allow oxygen to pass through it. I know I've had some questions about that in the past as well. Uh, and, and what the clay is going to do is it's going to hold the active ingredients in place where it needs to be to fight off the bacteria. The other product uh, that comes in a different form is our various finish. It is a liquid. Uh, it is a very mild product. It has some of the same active ingredients, uh, tea tree oil, some tame diodine, has the yucca in it as well. But this product has an added advantage in that it actually has a phospholipid compound in it, meaning that it has the ability to shed the excess moisture from the hoof capsule or it has the ability to maintain and retain the needed moisture if it's extremely dry to keep that hoof wall pliable and to keep it from cracking. So basically, bottom line, it's going to help regulate that moisture within the capsule. It's going to help us during those extreme wet dry conditions. And then it's going to fight off any bacteria that wants to work on the foot itself. Now, both products can be used together at the same time. We would use the clay first in our specific problem areas, and then we would come back with a brush, sponge, and coat the sole of the foot and the entire hoof wall itself. And our last product is Farius Formula, which is going to help the nutritional side uh, internally as far as regenerating, regrowing the foot. Uh, over a period of time. In fact, Ferris Formula has been around for 40 plus years now. Uh, it is a research-based product. In fact, it's helped many, many, many horses around the world. Uh, it is the number one supplement recommended by farriers in the U.S. as well. In fact, this is an 11-pound bag of product that's been vacuum sealed. Uh, this 11-pound product is going to last a thousand pound horse for 60 days. Uh, essentially, it takes about uh, two to three months to get this into the system of the horse. And at that point, uh, you should be seeing new hoof growth at the coronary band. And from that point, it'll take another six or seven months to completely grow the foot out. And as this foot grows out internally, it's going to thicken the hoof wall, thicken the sole of the foot, just to improve the overall quality of the foot. Uh, it's going to improve the frog itself. Uh, and at this point, the, uh, it, the hoof is going to be more resilient against an attack of bacteria uh, such as thrush. And of course, the topicals along with Farragut's formula is what we need to take a look at uh, in using on a regular basis. And Corbin, I think it's time for our giveaway. All right, everybody. Uh, so while I'm drawing names, uh, this is your chance to enter in any questions you uh, may have if you haven't already. Uh, again, the question bar there should be on your right-hand side of your screen. Um, you can submit those, and then right after the giveaway, 
I'm going to hand this back over to Mike, and Mike uh, is going to take on some of your questions and, and um, see if we can answer some. Okay, so uh, today's giveaway, we're going to be giving away an 11-pound bag of the Farrier's Formula Double Strength, along with a jar of the Life Data Hoof Clay and the Farrier's Finish, uh, basically the complete package on what we would recommend for, for thrush or any really hoof problems. Um, this right here is kind of the complete deal. Uh, so today's winner is Beth Wilburn. Uh, Beth, if you can email C service at lifedatalabs.com. Uh, you email them and you can in the subject line, just put webinar winner, uh, provide your name, uh, shipping address, and your phone number. Um, and then we will be able to send that out to you. And uh, congratulations to you. Um, okay, so uh, questions. If you guys have any questions, please submit them. I know we've got several um, on here already. Uh, so let me grab the first one. Okay, uh, Mike, this is from Linda Harrison. Um, if your horse wears shoes because her hoof is not able to stand on its own, how can you treat it with shoes on? It's treating for thrush, thrush with the shoes on. You're, you're able to do that whether or not the uh, horse is barefoot or is shod. Uh, essentially, one of the steps is right after the horse has been, has been trimmed, and right before that shoe is nailed on, if the farrier will use the hoof clay underneath the shoe itself, that's your starting point. Uh, if you have a thrush problem, even with shoes on, you can apply the hoof clay to either side of the frog, unless you have a hospital plate on or something like that, which I'm assuming that you do not. Uh, then the liquid product can be applied to everything underneath uh, and everything as far as the hoof wall itself, even if a horse is shod. And be sure to concentrate on the old nail holes as well. Okay, so the next one is from uh, Katie O'Rourke. Uh, can the hoof clay be used if the horse isn't shod? Will the clay stay in long enough to do its job? Uh, yes, it doesn't matter if the horse is shot or barefoot, uh, and, and as I tried to stress a little bit earlier, uh, if we have a thrush problem that's on either side of the frog, our goal is just to get a, a coating of the hoof clay uh, uh, in the grooves or the commissures and, and as far as the central part of the frog as well. Of course, naturally, we want to pick that out, brush that out, and then make that application. And then I may have missed this uh, while you were talking, but we also want to make sure that hoof is completely dry. That's the ideal The ideal foot to apply any topical would be a dry foot, absolutely. Um, and then I know you talked about this a little bit, Mike, uh, but Hannah here would like to know, um, have you explain uh, how the hoof clay allows oxygen penetration to the hoof? Uh, it the, the the clay itself is porous, so oxygen will actually pass through the clay itself. Of course, the clay is actually holding the active ingredients in place where it needs to be, and that's going to stop any bacterial growth at that point. Okay. Uh, do you put the farrier's finish onto the frog? Absolutely. In fact, you can put Ferris finish on the entire sole, the frog, and the entire hoof wall. Okay. Uh, do you want, know what the name of the bacteria that causes thrush? It, the most common is uh, Fusobacterium necoform. Of course, uh, uh, most of the time we feel like thrush is created from bacteria. Uh, we might have some uh, fungi that's involved in the problem as well. Okay. Um, Mike, how do you know if a product is caustic? If it, if there's a warning on the label that tells you not to get it on your skin, then that product is caustic. 
If it burns you, it burns if the horse. If it burns you, it's going to burn sensitive tissue in the foot of that horse. Uh, do you think a good soak, such as white lightning, is also good in addition? Uh, depending on what your problem may be, especially if you have a white line problem, uh, then a lot of veter veterinarians will recommend this particular soak, soak here. If you, if you don't have a white line problem and you're just dealing with a thrush problem, I, I think uh, either the clay or the finish would work uh, sufficiently. Okay. Um, is it true that white, white hoofs are more prone to thrush? Uh, there is no solid research that would suggest that white hooves are inferior to dark hooves. In fact, personally speaking, uh, I have horses with white feet and their hooves tend to be more resilient through a thrush problem than the dark hooved horses. Okay. Uh, will obesity increase the chances of thrush? Uh, yes, it will, because it's going to distort the hoof capsule itself, and when you do that, you end up a lot of times with a foot that wants to pancake. You also end up with a foot that uh, will probably have some stretching in the white line area as well, uh, and that's just ideal situations for a bacterial infection to take a hold. See, so this one um, is a little bit long, so uh, stay with me as I read it out. This is from Stacy. Um, is the solution mixture of equal parts of strong iodine solution, nail polish remover, and rubbing alcohol a caustic solution? I am treating thrush and was told applying this solution would work as a drying agent and also kill the thrush bacteria and was told to apply it daily until it was gone. What were the three ingredients? One more time. Um, See, it was equal mixture of strong iodine solution, nail polish remover, and rubbing alcohol. I would be uh, leery of that particular combination there. Uh, in, in fact, you really don't want to use over a 2% solution when it comes to iodine itself. Anything over that is going to burn the foot. Of course, the alcohol is going to burn tissue as well. Uh, nail polish, I, I don't know the answer on that one there, uh, but I would assume that nail polish, if it seals, it's going to block the needed oxygen. So I would reconsider the use of what you're doing. Um, okay, and then we've had a question on whether or not this material will be available for future viewing. Uh, Grace, yes, it will be. Uh, so uh, after this webinar, um, I'm going to be putting it into a format uh, that we can use to, uh, to put onto YouTube. Um, we'll be uh, sending out uh, an email with, with, the, uh, with the recording as well. Um, and, and you can also check on our Facebook. Uh, we'll be posting it uh, there as well after the fact. So uh, yes, it will be available to view. And then should also like to know, does Life Data have a supplement similar to FAIR's formula that is recommended for laminitic or insulin resistant equines? We actually have both. In, in fact, we have a companion product that's to be fed along with various formula that's called our, our lamini formula. Uh, and I know personally firsthand, I, I have one of those uh, horses that has had chronic laminitis for the past five to six years. And by incorporating the lamini formula along with various formula, it's made a tremendous difference in improving soil quality, hoof quality. Uh, and we've been through going on three cycles where the horse is not lame now. But yes, we do have additional products to address some of these uh, other uh, metabolic issues as well. Um, and, and Grace, I mentioned earlier about our YouTube. Um, that's youtube.com slash Life Data Labs. Uh, we actually have a recorded webinar um, on laminitis that you can view, um, as well as a, a short video uh, featuring Mike's horse, uh, who's laminitic. Um, both of those um, will probably be great for you to check out. 
um, to learn a little bit more about, uh, about the lamina product. Okay. Um, uh, she was also told, uh, this is from uh, Stacy, I was also told to use Clorox to dry up and kill the thrush. Stacy, I still stay away from Clorox myself. Uh, I, I know a lot of folks will use a Clorox solution, but you still run into the problem of burning and killing that tissue. So it may, it may get rid of that thrush, sure, but that damage to that tissue but, is just going to be food for future bacteria. That's right. That you, 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 you're creating yourself for a cycle of thrush, and that's what we're trying to avoid. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Uh, this is from Renee. I live in a very wet place, and my horses end up with thin, soft foals, uh, soles, and my carrier recommended turpentine with iodine. But what else do you recommend? Well, if we will think about improving soul thickness, number one, and the quality of the foot, number two, uh, then that foot's going to be more resilient to this excess moisture. Uh, I would take a look at using some farious formula to improve hook quality. It's going to improve the thickness of the sole itself. It's also going to improve the thickness of the hoof wall and just improve the overall aspect of the foot. I would also incorporate some farious finish, which is the liquid product along with farious formula. Uh, and that farious finish would go on the entire foot, the sole and the entire hoof wall. And if we use both products together, we're addressing it from a nutritional side, improving hoof quality, and we're attacking the environmental issues as such as the excess moisture and the bacteria that's ever present. Um, and then just kind of expand on that question that turpentine will is considered a caustic chemical. It is correct? considered a caustic chemical and I would avoid that as well. Okay. Um, and if she is seeing some very wet places, how often would you recommend that she uses that barrier's finish? In extreme conditions, I'd want to use it anywhere from three to four to five times a week. And if we can get the horse up long enough to kind of dry up the feet first and then make the application, uh, that is our best situation. Wonderful. Um, okay, this is from Tammy Mitchell. Uh, she says, will the clay be used in hoof wall separations? Uh, absolutely. And I'm assuming when you say hoof wall separation, we're talking about the white line area itself. Uh, we can actually take uh, a dental tool or something and clean that area out and then fill that void with the clay itself. Uh, you should have enough residual there for about two to three days. Let's come back, clean out, and do another application then. And as you mentioned earlier, that hoof clay is kind of for those specific conditions. So any really hoof defect, that hoof clay crack, split, white line absolutely uh, frog area that hook like can be used to directly treat that area absolutely Corbin. Cool. um how long does the hook clay active ingredients stay active uh somewhere in the neighborhood of about two to three days and if it's if it's dry uh, longer than that mm -hmm. and so i guess with that hook clay if it's wet we, do we need to use it more frequently in wet conditions and if it's dry and we don't have a moisture problem then we can go a little bit longer than that and then if it's wet again we want to make sure that hoof is completely dry if at all possible yes do you recommend that we allow that horse to stay in a dry place for a little while yeah if, if the only thing you can do is pull the horse up put him into a stall with some shavings or something like that uh, that's going to help dry the foot out. Um, this is from uh, Grace. Is Ferris formula a complete supplement that aids in the overall balancing of vitamins and minerals beyond hoof care? Does it include selenium? Uh, Ferris formula has no selenium in it whatsoever to answer that question. We do have another product called Barn Bag. And barn bag is what we call our complete vitamin mineral supplement. It becomes the diet of the horse. 
And then if that horse has a hoof issue that needs to be addressed as well, we can feed farious formula and barn bag together without over supplementation. And both of those products uh, uh, together do a fabulous job in providing the nutritional needs of the horse on a daily basis, plus providing the nutrients needed as far as dermal tissue growth and maintenance. Would a mule use the same amount of farious formula double strength as a horse? Is the regular strength more palatable than the double strength? Uh, yes, we, we're going to feed it by body weight regardless if it's a mule or a horse. Uh, the only difference between the original and the double strength is, well, there's about three things. Uh, the amount that you feed, if you're feeding double strength versus the original, you feed half as much double strength versus the original. Uh, uh, the cost uh, versus uh, double strength, and the, the double strength is a little more economical on a per day basis to feed. Uh, you will find that there's going to be just a little more alfalfa in the original than the double strength. You get the same results. Okay. Uh, what is your recommended treatment for abscesses? Uh, can any of the life data products assist with this? What is your opinion for soaking or sugardine treatments for this condition? Well, the, our goal, number one, is to alleviate the pressure that uh, that abscess is being created, uh, and that may involve some type of a uh, soak to do that. Uh, uh, and, and with an abscess as well, you're more than likely going to have to have the assistance of a farrier. In fact, a farrier or even a veterinarian can come in and relieve that pressure uh by, by tapping into that abscess so it, it just depends on the horse the situation where that abscess is located uh as far as any life data labs product that's going to help you if that horse is prone to abscessing that tells me that you're lacking some hoof quality there uh, Fair's formula would go a long way in improving hoof quality. In fact, we have had uh, hundreds of horses that are in your situation where they want to chronic abscess. They've been put on Farrier's formula, maintained on Farrier's formula, and the abscessing has all but ceased at that point. Now, after the abscess has ruptured and it has completely quit draining, uh, the hoof clay can be used to be packed into that exit wound as well. Um, and again, Grace, we actually do have another webinar on hoof abscesses. Um, and that was the one we had um, with uh, Darren Owens. Right. He, he's a professional farrier. He came on with us and also discussed that from a farrier standpoint. Um, so there's some really good information um, on that as well. Um, are all the life data products available in Australia? Not all of them are. I know Farrier's formula is available in Australia. Yeah. Okay, um, and then Stacy wanted to, to say it wasn't nail polish, but nail polish remover. I, I would stay away from that as well. It's going to be caustic. Um, okay, so we're wrapping up questions. Um, I have a few left that I still need to address. Um, but again, if you have a last minute question, please submit that. Uh, once we finish these, we'll be wrapping up our webinar. Okay, uh, John Hoffman, uh, can the hoof clay be used for an old solar abscess eruption? Uh, yes, it can. In fact, uh, on a solar abscess like that, what the horse has got to do uh, over a period of time is basically regenerate a new soul. And, and that old soul uh, is is going to come off or your farrier is going to assist the horse in removing that at some point in the future. Of course, to help regenerate that new soul, farrier's formula is going to help you there tremendously. Uh, and yes, the hoof clay can be used in that solar abscess as long as it has quit drying, I mean, quit draining. Okay. 
Okay, so that ends um, ends our questions. Uh, so I want to thank everybody who came on to this webinar today. Uh, we truly appreciate it. And um, again, you guys, uh, we have a, a lot um, of other webinars that are available on YouTube that are pre-recorded. Uh, we will be adding this one um, as well. If you have any, uh, if you'd like to have any other further information. Um, on any of the products that you heard about today, uh, you can visit our website, www.lifedatalabs.com, um, or you can call our 1-800 number um, to talk to our customer service. Um, you may also email us at cservice at lifedatalabs.com. Uh, we're also uh, on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, please look us up, give us a follow. Uh, we post a lot of uh, articles and, and blogs and testimonials um, and so on through those avenues um, that can provide you some further information um, uh, to these products. Um, Mike, you want to add anything else to that? I'd just like to say thank you for joining us and if there's anything that we can do to help you from Life Data Lab standpoint, uh, please feel free to uh, contact us, give us a phone call, shoot us an email and we would be more than happy to help you. Thanks again. I hope everybody has a great day and a great upcoming weekend.